finally, update V64 is here. Finally, we have some juice, some sauce, some Zuckerberg Riz. Today, I'm going to speed run everything that you need to know, along with anything major that's happened over the last couple of weeks. If you, like me, are a no-life VR user. Also, including how you basically won't be able to play anything on the Quest 1 anymore. It's a little more complicated than that, but I'll explain in a moment. And obviously, if anything is too useful, or you too are a brain-dead chimpanzee like me, I like a sub would go a long way, making me feel less alone. Anyway... Worst rapper to ever spit on an open mic. First, improved pass through quality. This is the big one. The one that you may have already heard about elsewhere online, like via worse VR YouTubers who are less sexy, funny, and likable than me. Meta CTO Andrew Boldsworth. <laughs> Andrew is Boldsworth. <laughs> Andrew literally has no hair. Stated that the Quest 3's pass through, which, if we're honest, wasn't exactly what Meta revealed to us initially at launch. It wasn't exactly bad, but it definitely wasn't the cinema quality camera pass through that Meta demonstrated in their marketing. He said that their pass through would improve modestly over time with software updates. And update v64 does exactly that. But does it? Here's a comparison. On the bottom is update v63, and on the top is update v64. In my opinion, this is a pretty major jump in quality, at least in this comparison. Others have posted the same sort of improvement improvements primarily in how the headset deals with bright lights like a phone screen now being able to clearly read text on it the past also generally seems to be slightly darker and less overexposed leading to less visible grain as well but i went and tested this myself as i should as this is my job. It's kind of an improvement. I think it's pretty situational, as they seem to have cranked down the headset's exposure overall, leading to a darker picture, which in turn allows for better visibility of screens, and it hides a lot of the grainy quality that you could clearly see with the previous, more exposed version of the pass-through on update v63 and prior. But the actual quality of this new pass-through is still not great, especially once you start moving. You still get a bunch of nasty distortion and fucking painful to look at jittering on anything that you you're looking directly at like my hand here when you're moving i think in fairness my conditions may be slightly unfair as i'm using studio lights and a bunch of led strip lights but in this lighting condition here there does seem to be a noticeable improvement the fluff on my hoodie is clearer colors are all slightly more natural looking and honestly it shocked me how good that this looks i think the pass through is still just a bit sensitive to lighting conditions as you would expect so how big of an improvement that you'll see will be highly dependent on your room's lighting and what you're looking at a lot of the gray and the distortion is all still there it's just that by dropping the exposure and making the picture darker as a whole that hides a lot of it but overall in fairness this improvement is pretty lit external microphone support basically the quest for these microphones kind of ass although update v62 did improve its quality a little bit many still want to use an external microphone for content creation purposes and until now you can do that in update v64 you can now add an external microphone via the usb-c port so you can do your fucking like dumbass asmr videos epic I'm still a fan even though it's salty Finally, lying down mode is here on the Quest 3. It was already on the Quest 2 and the Quest Pro, but now it's here on the 3. Click the switch in the experimental features menu and you can use apps lying down. Thanks. You can now continuously cast. So whenever you take off the headset while casting to a TV or whatever, it just won't cut out and go completely blank, allegedly. Mad. I don't be giving up words. Okay, so I'm related to the recent update. I hopped on to check out the new changes to the pass through and I found myself just looking at my avatar in the mirror, screwing around with all the new hand tracking improvements. Now these improvements were literally introduced all the way back in like 2023, but I hadn't really spent any time trying it out because like probably most of you, I usually just hop straight into games. And I realized with the addition of avatar legs, these new hand tracking improvements and the improvements to the movement of the avatar's elbows and upper body that have been introduced over the last year or so, just looking at my avatar in the mirror is actually crazy. I mean, look how articulate Meta's avatar system has actually become. This used to be actual garbo. I mean, floating body, broken elbow, wonky hand tracking trash. But now we have legitimately functional avatars here that actually look pretty good. I just want to see these avatars used in more games and applications because this is so cool to me, especially if you have a Quest Pro and you have the face tracking along with all these improvements. And I realized Meta's gotten a lot of flack for their avatars and rightfully so. I mean, they look like 
fucking dog ass. But these are, right now, I think, whether you like metal or not, these are some of the best avatars out there right now. And I legitimately, unironically prefer this to, I mean, whatever the fuck this is. I mean, come on, man. While I was screwing around with this, I also noticed that there's more clothes items in the avatar customization. I don't know when this stuff was added or if I'm just like a brain dead moron that missed some of the announcements, which I am. But meta literally has like 100 Thieves merch in here now that you can buy, bro. They even have Street Fighter 6 merch too. Now, honestly, even though that this is paid and that you literally like own nothing in this reality and it can all be rendered irrelevant if you don't upgrade to each new headset in time. Besides all of that seriously questionable dystopian future that we may be sleepwalking into, this is actually kind of cool. I can't lie. There's a few completely three things in here as well. Okay. Anyway. When I get signed, help me, I'm making food. Hit the dance floor. Bonzi should get him here. What's the game name? It's a Dark Souls like fantasy RPG, but it's in VR. It's finally available on App Lab and Steam. It's available on basically every VR headset out right now. It's got full skill trees, it's got boss battles. It even has full on crafting. I should take this off, hold on. I can't take this off. It's got fully voice acted NPCs and a full storyline. Now it is currently in early access, but it's being constantly patched and updated and worked on. Links will be in the description down below if you want to go check it out. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go hit all of this now. Thanks for all the money. Uh, Okay, now let's be running literally everything else that's happened in the last couple of weeks rather than dragging it out into multiple near daily uploads like everyone else because I actually respect your time, even though literally no one appreciates this anyway. The quest one is actually now officially dead and buried. Ironically, dead and buried the game is also dead and buried, uh, but that's besides the point. Basically, any new games releasing to the quest store or app lab flat out won't be allowed to support the quest one at all from next month onwards. I know that some of you guys won't care because you're on the quest two or the quest three, but this will happen to these headsets too. The quest Quest 2 is next on the chopping block. I mean, Meta looks to actually be trying to clear the Quest 2 stock as we speak with its recent $100 price drop and the Quest 3 Lite leaks, which is the headset that's seemingly intended to replace it at like $300 or so. Though granted, this sort of lack of support isn't going to come anytime soon. This is now only happening five years after the Quest 1's release. So all things considered, this thing has had a pretty fucking great run. It just sucks that this is the way it is and that all of this tech is in a constant state of vaporware that's replaced and discontinued and then destroyed every few years. The problem I have with this is that Meta flat out aren't letting developers support the headset at all onwards of May. If you want to make a game that could run on the Quest 1 or you have a game that already runs well enough on the Quest 1 and you put it on the Quest Store for those users, you can't do that anymore. Already established games like Gorilla Tag that have been able to run on the Quest 1 for years now are being delisted from the Quest 1 store. Even though these headsets are capable of running the games, they're just not allowed to be supported it at all. Quest 1 players that have the game installed can still play games like Gorilla Tag for the time being, but judging by the wording that Gorilla Tag used in their own tweet explaining this, they stated that they're going to announce specific details as to how Quest 1 players will be affected as things change, and at least to me that clearly implies that the Quest 1 is about to lose support on a host of different games as well, not just Gorilla Tag. I get that these games have to move away from that hardware in order to progress and in order to optimize for the Quest 2 and 3 and produce bigger updates and bigger maps but I think stripping developers ability from optionally deciding to support it or not, I think it's a bit wrong. But given that the Quest 2 is now $200, if you are still on a Quest 1, it's time to jump ship. By the way, if you're still on a Quest 1, here's your f***ing crown, King. But seriously, all of you still rocking that headset, I have my respect for you. Comment down below if you're still on a Quest 1, and everyone, go down and like their comment. They deserve it, seriously. They've held out for five years and can now get a Quest 2 for dirt cheap, brand new. The Apple Vision Pro now has 3D spatial personas. It's still creepy as f I mean, oh my god, look at this. Uh, but it's still, I guess, impressive. It's an impressive step in the technology that will hopefully get less uncomfortable and uncanny over time. This is Exo Cars. It's not out yet, but it's allegedly a physics-based VR racing game with multiplayer. Judging by these screenshots, it looks sick as hell. But right now, it's not out, and it will first go into early access on PC, and then allegedly getting a Quest version. I don't know if any of you care, I just wanted to mention it, because I saw it, and it 
looks f***ing cool. Contractor Showdown looks like it may actually be a seriously big deal in the VR industry. Yeah, it's another Battle Royale and arguably a pretty obvious VR ripoff of Warzone, but judging by the reactions so far, this game is actually surprisingly well-rounded, graphically very impressive, the Quest hardware, and even UFC fighter Matt Serra, also a legitimate VR user, was on the Joe Rogan broadcast going ape shit about how good the game is. It's crazy to see any VR title get this sort of mainstream attention, and I'm probably going to do an entire dedicated video on the game because the amount of content here is actually wild, judging from what I've watched online with a store, unlocks, individual attachments. It's just so exciting to have a game like Contractor Showdown, Bale, Underdog, Swarm 2, Racket Club all come out within the first four months of this year, hitting the ground running with so much content on a VR headset. These are fully fledged games, which is still wild to me as someone who has been playing VR for like all five years now. Back when I started this channel, so many releases were at best just tech demos. I kind of can't get over how good we have it right now. Even though VR viewership on YouTube is in the toilet and I have to keep working sponsorship segments into basically every video to keep the fucking lights on. Bitch, we go super crazy for the bank.